ever thought why Newton discovered gravity? How Darwin was able to explain his law? How Chomsky was able to explain the concept of linguistics? Definitely, all these did not came in one day. There was a series of events that led to these discoveries and each of the philosophers have their unique viewpoint about this. Kunz's view is one of those and Kunz basically said that science does not evolve gradually towards the truth. He believed that there is a paradigm. Now, what is a paradigm is very, very interesting. According to him, paradigm is a universally recognizable scientific achievement that takes place. Now, this remains there for a period of time and it is accepted by the dominant scientific community at that point of time. But at certain point of time, there are questions that start to raise up and if these questions cannot be answered, this leads to what? You are correct. This leads to a revolution and that is what is a scientific revolution. And under Kunz's paradigm, his phases of science, he tried to explain that how these new theories were evolved on the existing paradigms that, ex that happened and this new theories created a paradigm shift. So he explained four phases under which science actually develops. So let's talk about these four phases which are pre-pragmatic phase, normal science, crisis and a scientific revolution one by one. So let's focus on the very first phase. What is that? It is pre-pragmatic. So definitely as we said paradigm is a universally accepted set of scientific achievement by the community of scientific scholars pre-pragmatic was a phase that happened before that so each of the scientists is working in their own laboratories independently what i am working what you are working what your friend is working we all are unaware about one another's work so here the work is very very disorganized definitely there is no binding force that can bring the scientific community together on the same theme. Let's take a very simple example of COVID vaccination nowadays. So probably if the scientific community does not come hand in hand, each of the scientist teams in different parts of the world would be working and experimenting probably on the same vaccination. And this kind of research would be what? It would be highly disorganized. It would be highly fundamental because each of them are starting from the scratch. We do not know what has already happened. If I have communicated probably with a person in another country who has done a similar research, I can move forward over and above that research. But until I know that, I am moving from the fundamentals. So therefore, Pre-pragmatic phase is very, very fundamental in nature. The work starts from the root and there is no commonly accepted work that is there in public. There are conflicting theories. So probably my theory could be very, very different from your theory. Your theory could be very, very different from your friend's theory. But all of us are trying to propound some theory. So what happens under normal science? Under normal science, they come hand in hand. They try to unite and all of the people working on the same concepts try to establish and lay the foundation of legitimate science and this is what is known as the second phase of science under Kunz paradigm and that is a normal science. So all the kind of anomalies are resisted at this point of time. Any kind of puzzles that come in are solved together with the scientific community and whatever rules, whatever theories, whatever theorems are being laid down are universally accepted and are well known 
by all of the community people and even those who are interested in the field so this is where we have the normal science but normal science does not end there itself sometimes it so happens that it might lead to a specific frustration that despite of proving so much despite of putting in so many efforts we are not able to propound a good theory and this leads to what this leads to crisis a similar crisis situation we also have when we are either studying when we are doing our daily activities we are into a job if we are not able to perform well on one day we might think we are not meant for it and there could be a crisis situation where you might think that let's try another job let's try another field and this is a crisis situation now in the crisis situation this situation is the point where the paradigm shift starts to occur now here there could be two things that could occur either you are able to solve the crisis that was there and if you are able to solve the crisis you would move back to what you would move back to normal science because you are able to solve the crisis situation in case you are not accepting the normal science and there was a crisis you create a new concept and that could lead to a scientific revolution or a paradigm shift what we say so this crisis phase is very very important and this generates why this generates because there is anomaly that comes in and this anomaly therefore becomes very very important feature under Kuhn's paradigm because according to him these anomalies give you a path for creating new thoughts and probably new discoveries and new inventions if this anomaly did not exist people would not question the previous existing laws they would follow what have been given so far blindly there would have been no darwin's theory over a lamarck's theory there would not have been any revolution in linguistics as given by chomsky there wouldn't be any specific theory on relativity as given by einstein so all this is a result of what it is a result of a crisis situation a crisis phase and that is where a anomaly exists or a anomaly comes into picture and based on that anomaly we are able to understand whether we can resolve that anomaly and if that uh, this anomaly can be resolved it can go back to the normal side if that anomaly cannot be resolved we would have to establish a new fact and that would lead to scientific revolution and there is where the paradigm change is required so as we said if the crisis is resolved we move back to normal science if the crisis is not resolved we move back to the scientific revolution and this scientific revolution is the revolution where we are trying to establish a new theory a new concept a new theorem whatsoever the work was and we are trying to justify this newly established concept so the new paradigm that establishes is able to do what it is able to give proper justification for the crisis that had occurred in the scientific community and there are significant measures that are taken to adopt or to accept that new change note accepting a change is difficult but that is what scientific revolution does we have good examples of renaissance under the french revolution so that was again a phase where the crisis situation was challenged the anomaly could not be resolved and therefore there was a revolution again and this is what is known as a shift a paradigm shift a shift in the existing universal scientific community pattern that occurs and the common consensus of the scientist is being challenged and this rejects the 
existing paradigm and brings into light a new paradigm and therefore we say that science is a product of society in which it is practiced so based on the society where the science is practiced with the changes in the time with the changes in the evolution we need to create a change a very simple example would be using telegraph services from a telegraph services moving to a telephone services moving from telephone to a mobile telephony and probably from a mobile telephony to an electronic telephony or a voice uh, a voice support system that could be there and this is again a paradigm shift that occurs so with each paradigm shift the previous paradigm shift slowly and gradually loses its importance and there is a new newly acceptable uh, paradigm that comes into existence which is now a well established paradigm so that was about the kunz paradigm and how he explained his phases of science for achieving a scientific uh, development and how the new generations grew up on a familiar or a well established paradigm and that well established pa paradigm gives a foundation for the new developments so if there had been no industrial revolution we could not think about the automation the industrial revolution 4.0 that we have now we cannot talk about artificial intelligence and iot so there is how we grow on the existing familiar signs so first first paradigm is based on the familiarity of the signs and with the shift in the paradigm we have new paradigms that are established on the existing paradigms we would be covering many more interesting lectures in logic and philosophical constructs have a wonderful day ahead